I want to welcome you to our daily devotion time this morning, Tuesday morning, and we're looking at the book of Jude, and this morning, by the grace of God, I'd like to unpack a little bit with verses 13, 14, and 15. He said, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Now, before we unpack this, we want to pray. Let's continue to remember our sick, one another, our nation. Uh, Sister Chassie will be having surgery tomorrow. Let's remember her. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for time to be able to just go away quietly and study your word, to meditate. And Father, help us that throughout this day that we meditate upon your word and see how that we reflect within that word in the name of Christ. Amen. Now, the picture here that Jude has given us is that of sea waves that rage and foam under the fierce winds of a storm. Now, after the storm quietens down, now we... we Many of us have been down to the coast after a hurricane or some tropical depression, and we see the remnants. Uh, there's all kinds of debris that will be strung along the shoreline, debris such as driftwood, seaweed, scum, all kinds of litter. The site is ghastly, ugly, repulsive. Mm, trying to sneeze. The site is shameful. Thus, it is also with mm, false teachers. They foam out their teeth. <coughs> Goodness, finally got that out. Now, maybe we can move on. They foam out their teaching that leaves a ghastly scene upon the church. What they teach is shameful. It brings shame upon the name of Christ. It brings shame upon the name of the church. Their teaching is a disgrace, ugly, repulsive. It is nothing more than useless debris that does not belong in the church of our Lord. Now, Jesus teaches us in the book of Luke, and why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? <coughs> now, what is our greatest teaching method? the life that we live. It's not just the words that come through our lips, but it is our behavior before other people. So these things are important that we think about. Now he goes on to talk about the wonder about as a fallen star that quickly passes into eternal darkness. Now this is a picture of a shooting star that shoots its light across the sky ever so quickly. But then, you know, it's just gone forever into the darkness. The light promised by false teachers does not last, nor can it last, for it is only of this earth. And all the things of the earth disappear through age, change, deterioration, decay, death, disappear into the eternal abyss of darkness. False teachers wander about grasping for light and truth and ideas and help and in all the wrong places. But nothing on this earth meets the desperate need of man for life, for love, for joy, peace, fulfillment, completeness, and satisfaction. If, it, if you look here on this earth, you'll never find these things. And the reason is ever so clear. Life in all of its fullness is found only in Christ, the one who revealed the life of God to us. 
What was it the psalmist tells us? The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Now, Jude goes on to tell us that these folks are doomed to be judged by our Lord Christ himself. Now, the Lord Jesus is returning to earth to judge, and he'll judge the false teachers just as well. He's coming with 10,000 of his holy ones. Now, the words 10,000 means thousands multiplied by thousands by thousands, multitudes and mirards. Now, it's just an unlimited number of holy beings. He has come to judge the world. But let us note something here. The present passage is talking specifically about the judgment of false teachers, the judgments of all those who have taught something other than the fact that Jesus Christ is the Son of God sent into the world to save me. False teachers will be judged for a couple things. But now let's look at it. Again, teaching is not just words spoken but it's life that is lived. When we claim to be something, we claim to be of the called of God, and we are not living before others the life. If we're presenting that that is totally opposite of who Jesus is, and so we have to look closely at our behavior, Actions and reactions. How we react to things means so much because we're teaching people through our actions. How does a man teach his children what a good husband and a good father is? Is it by the words that he speaks or is it by the life that he lives? How does a minister, how does a deacon, how does a Sunday school teacher, how does youth directors, how does youth pastors, how do these people truly teach by the life that they live in front of others? So, you know, a lot of times people say, well, I, I, I never have said it with words that Jesus is not the Son of God. But how about with your action? You know, I'm a Christian. I, I, I'm the pastor, I'm the deacon, I'm the Sunday school teacher. But yet, when people look, do they see the false teaching of behavior or the true teaching of Jesus through behavior. They will be judged for all their ungodly deeds, all the deeds that did not center around Christ. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Not just the words that come forth from his lips, they will be judged for all the untrue, harsh, and defiant words as well as actions against Christ. And you say, well, now, I don't, never, I, now preach, I just don't say too much about Christ. I don't sp speak against you. But do you not? O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And so out of the abundance of heart uh, comes a multitude of things. And it's just not say, okay, now, we have to be careful. If I speak against a brother and speak falsely, or speak something that just because I don't like what they're doing and, and, and their preference is not mine, but, it, but I'm not speaking against biblical doctrine. I'm not speaking against something that Christ said is wrong. It's just not my preference. But yet I can openly condemn and say things to make people think that they're not walking the walk. Because I don't like what they like. 
don't agree with what they agree with. Not, not, we're not talking about doctrine here, but yet but we make we use doctrine to make them look wrong. Then you're really speaking against Christ. Because Christ teaches us that in his word. So we have to be careful. Let's pray. Father, as we go through this Tuesday, help us ponder your holy word. Help us to digest it and see our reflection in your word. In the name of Christ, amen.